Shabbat Shalom. My name is David Offit, and this summer I'm so excited to be returning to camp as Rosh Nivonim. This week's Parsha is arguably one of the most well-known Parshiot that we read from the Torah every year, Parshat Vayera. Vayera starts out, as many Parshiot do, with God speaking to Moses. He tells Moses to go down to Egypt and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Moses, however, is incapable of speaking clearly by himself, and thus he needs help from his brother Aaron to relay the message to Pharaoh. And the rest of the Parsha is deeply ingrained in our memories. Moses and Aaron go down to Egypt and they help bring the plagues upon the Egyptians. Parshat Vayera goes through the first seven plagues. Dam, blood. Svardea, frogs. Kinim, lice. Arov, wild beasts. Dever, disease. Shrin, boils. And Barad, hail. The Parsha ends on a cliffhanger. The first seven plagues have been performed, but Pharaoh's heart is still hardened. Thus, the people are not yet let go. When we read about the plagues each year during our seders, we try to go over them as quickly as possible, giving only one word to remember each of the plagues. But if you've never read through the Torah's telling of the story, I highly encourage it. The account is much more detailed, who did what, when, and how. But this week I'd like to focus less on the plagues themselves and more on the people who performed them, that is, Moses and Aaron. Of course, God was ultimately responsible for the plagues. Moses and Aaron, simply messengers of God, were merely sent to help bring about the plagues. They did not come up with the plagues, and they did not have any of God's power. Even though the plagues were God's doing, I'm more interested in the relationship between Moses and Aaron. The last pasuk of the entire Torah states that there would never again be a prophet like Moses for the people of Israel. Moses gets the credit for taking the Israelites out of Egypt. Moses got the opportunity to speak directly with God more than anyone else in Jewish history. Moses had the ultimate privilege to go and get the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai. But in this parsha, the first three plagues are actually brought upon by Aaron. God tells Moses to instruct Aaron to actually lift up his rod and perform the miracles. After the first three plagues, Moses and God do the rest. But it's really Aaron who gets the ball rolling. Why? As we learned in the last Parsha, Moses is not comfortable with his own speaking abilities, so God sends Aaron to help him out. When the brothers actually get to Egypt, maybe Moses isn't yet ready to perform any great plagues by himself. Maybe he still needs the help, guidance, and leadership of his older brother to start off such an important series of events. Some commentators say that the first three plagues were simpler and thus were more suited to Aaron rather than Moses. Dealing with blood, frogs, and lice is seen as easier than bringing hail or boils. Even if Aaron isn't the greatest prophet the Jews ever had, it's important to recognize him when we think about the ten plagues. In many ways, Aaron is an unsung hero. We don't think a lot about how great Aaron is or how important Aaron is during the ten plagues. I know I often picture Aaron just standing next to Moses while Moses did all the important stuff. I think of him as someone who was only there to support Moses, but Aaron did a lot more than that. He contributed greatly to the ten plagues and started them off when Moses didn't. I think we can learn two important lessons from this. First, the fact that Moses didn't perform the first three plagues by himself does not make him any less of a great prophet. He didn't need to do it all by himself to be successful. In order to complete all of the plagues in this Parsha, Moses and Aaron needed to work as a team. At camp, both as Chanichim and Madrichim, we can only be successful when we're working with others. Whether you're practicing for Yom Berkshires or planning a Pulat Arab, you are only as strong as the people around you. Moses didn't need to be the hero and do everything alone. He was content with working with Aaron to get the job done. Second, we learn to respect the unsung heroes, those who do a lot of the work but don't get a lot of the credit. This week when you hear this Parsha being read aloud in Shul, remember Aaron and how important he was. At camp, there are literally hundreds of people who make camp run every day. Remember that even though not everyone is in the spotlight all the time, everyone is important to making the summer successful as a whole. For more information on Parshat Vayera, I highly encourage you to watch The Prince of Egypt. Shabbat Shalom and see you in Palmer in just 165 days.